I kind of hate doing composites. I mentioned this in a previous video, actually. I said that I hate fiberglass, and a lot of people ask me why I don't just do carbon fiber instead. It's because it's the same. It's messy, it gets everywhere, the part never comes out of the mold, the surface finish is never good. Composites are tough. It's one of those things that you just have to do correctly. You cannot half-ass it, or it will hurt you. Unfortunately, half is the exact amount of ass I like to give in my efforts, so this time we'll have to change it up a little bit. We'll have to do it correctly, with the correct tools. And it'll probably still not come out right. After I returned from the Bonneville Salt Flats, I delayed cleaning up my car until a few weeks ago, but there is one part that still hasn't been cleaned, and probably won't ever be, and that is the tail. I threw it in my backyard when I returned, and it's probably just going to stay there forever. I don't love this tail. There are a few things that need to change, and it's probably just easier to make an entire new one. For one, it needs to be a lot shorter. This is based on my aerodynamic analyses. Also, I need a spine at the top to hold the body and the fin. And three, I want the parachute tubes to be smaller. They are five inches in diameter. Most people use six, but I want to go with four. Unfortunately, four doesn't really fit the parachute, not well anyway, but a four by five does. We can narrow up the tail and have a 4 inch by 5 inch rectangle at the rear. The old tubes are actually exhaust tubes for an 18 wheeler, aluminized steel 5 inch tubes. I could probably figure out some way to squish the rear of these to make an outlet 4 inches wide, but I don't really like them. They're pretty heavy, and while weight doesn't matter for the performance of the car, I do need to remove this tail to store it and to transport the car, so I want it to be lightweight and easy. So let's make it easy. All these parachute tubes do is hold the parachute. The chutes themselves are attached to the frame of the car, so there's no load going through these tubes. They just need to hold the chutes and not fall off the car. Also, land speed cars don't need to be lightweight. In fact, a lot of teams add weight to get traction. Therefore, carbon fiber is not the correct material for this. It might be the exact opposite of the correct material for this. But I have to make a body for this car in the near future, and I haven't done composites in a while. Also, I have this box of carbon that has been sitting in my friend's garage for about a decade, and he wanted me to make it go away. So, we're going to make these out of carbon fiber. Proper woven carbon fiber. Not that forged bullcrap. Sure, sometimes forged carbon fiber is neat in small parts here and there, but it has gone way overboard. It's like a garnish next to a nice dinner. You're not supposed to make the whole dinner out of garnish. I always think it looks like those old fiberglass cafeteria trays from elementary school. It's not really forged. It's not increasing the strength of the part through compressive stress or changing the microstructure. It's just scraps of carbon mashed together with resin. Basically the cheapest method of making fiberglass, but you use carbon instead and squish it a bit. Let's style it back. It's not that cool. But I digress. The three worst parts of composites are the absolute mess it makes, removing the part from the mold, and trimming the part. Trimming should be easy since all I have to do is cut open that hole in the front and chop it to length. I have a couple of ideas for the absolute mess that we'll talk about later. As for removing the part from the mold, we're going to make this as simple as possible, and we're going to do this by making a multi-part 3D printed mold. The design we're going for is this 5 inch circle in the front, transitioning back to a 4 inch wide, 5 inch tall rectangle in the rear. I want to have rounded corners for this part, partly so the parachute can easily slide in and out, but mostly because it'll be a lot easier to make this way. I went ahead and picked a radius for these corners that would give the same circumference as the 5 inch circle up front. I don't really need to do this, but it seemed like a good idea. The mold here is pretty simple. By simple, I mean not simple at all. It's a 20 piece mold. Here's the idea. We have a tapered cone in the middle. It's tapered so that we can pull it out first. On the outside, we have four separate columns. On the top and bottom are these narrow tapered wedges. They are tapered like this so they can drop away from the part into the area that was previously occupied by the center cone. With those out of the way, the two sides can slide out and we have our part. Now that's only five pieces, but my 3D printer can only print about 10 inches, so we need to chop these all into four parts each. To connect them together, I made holes in each side to slide in a dowel pin. Then we can dowel pin locate them and super glue them together. These all mostly printed correctly, except for this one part. I got about halfway through making all of these when I realized I don't actually need the front of the tubes to be round. There's no reason to not make the whole thing this just rounded off rectangle shape. So I redesigned it, reprinted some of the parts, and that's what we're making. It was about this time that I realized I also could have just printed the tubes. Could have used heavy walls and made them plenty strong. I could have added features to attach them to the rear frame and attach the parachute flap thing. This would have been a lot easier, a lot quicker, and I probably would have used less plastic. 
I definitely would have used less plastic because I had to reprint most of these a third time because they did not survive getting removed from the part. But I am getting ahead of myself. I did have the clever idea of wrapping a thin walled print in carbon fiber and just leaving the print inside so I wouldn't have to deal with mold release at all. I was still going to use the mold to keep the shape, but I would put a thin condom of plastic around it that would just become part of the carbon tubes. This is kind of common, and I guess ABS works well for this since it bonds well to the epoxy. This was my try at making an ABS condom. It's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like this. I gave up on this pretty quickly. With the parts all printed, it was time to make some carbon fiber, right after we stick dowel pins in all of those plastic parts and glue them together. This was not great. I made the holes slightly too small, so it deformed the plastic just enough that they wouldn't go together flush. It doesn't actually matter. Very little of this part actually matters dimensionally, which makes it a great project to get back into composites. I said earlier that the worst part of composites is getting the part out of the mold. The way around this is to use lots of mold release and to carefully prep your mold by sanding it a lot and adding a thin candy shell of epoxy, sanding that a lot and adding wax and mold release. Or you just wrap it in saran wrap. Not actually saran wrap, expensive composite saran wrap. The problem with this stuff is that it always folds over and leaves wrinkles in your part, making the surface kind of look crappy. Fortunately, I do not care what the inside of these tubes look like, so we got some spray adhesive and stuck it on. Next is the carbon fiber. I wanted to do four layers of carbon, and I based that on absolutely nothing. It seemed like a good starting point. Rather than wrapping the entire thing four times with one continuous piece, we chose to chop it up into four pieces, each slightly larger than the outside of the tube, so there would be a little bit of overlap. I mentioned earlier that one of the other worst parts of composites is the awful mess, so we mitigated this by cosplaying Breaking Bad with some bunny suits and respirators, probably convincing all of my neighbors that we were cooking meth. We used slow cure epoxy resin to give us plenty of time. We did try to degas this resin in the vacuum chamber to get all the bubbles out, and it foamed up kind of a lot. I think this might be normal, but we kind of just stopped halfway through. Before we placed the carbon on the mold, we coated each layer with epoxy, just painting it on. We did this four times with our four layers and also made a little hat. On top of the carbon goes peel ply. Peel ply is this fabric type stuff that peels off composites pretty easily. It leaves a pretty consistent surface finish, but more importantly, it allows you to separate the upper layers from the cured epoxy. The upper layers in this case being cotton. This is there to soak up the excess resin. After that comes the vacuum bag. Vacuum bagging is one of those things in composites that always sucks. You usually make a bag using plastic and two-sided tape, and it always leaks, and you can never find the leak. But since these pieces are long and skinny, I can use a roll of kitchen vacuum bag material. This is normally used to vacuum seal food, but it works great here, and the food saver vacuum pump will automatically vacuum out the air and then seal it with a heat strip. The benefit of using a vacuum bag is that with the vacuum inside, the air pressure outside squeezes out all of the extra resin. If you have too much resin in a composite part, it doesn't get any stronger, just heavier. And the vacuum will help to keep just enough resin inside to make a strong, efficient part. Now, I said we used slow cure resin to give us plenty of time to work with the part before it started to cure. The problem with slow cure resin is that it needs to be above about 80 degrees or it won't completely cure. And it's about 50 degrees outside, so we made a curing oven by putting a heater in a closet. Which turned out to cause somewhat of a problem. I'm just kidding, it worked fine. Removing the part from the mold should be nice and easy since I made that clever multi-part internal mold. First things first, getting it out of the bag. This bag is made for food and not composite, so this could be really difficult. Oh, no, no, it was super easy. I bet the rest is also super easy. The peel ply does come off fairly easily, but the resin soaked cotton on top made it kind of difficult. At some point I got smart and put on gloves. I always forget the gloves. This was time consuming, but it did all come off, and it came off cleanly, so that was nice. Getting the printed parts out of the tube was not quite so nice. I designed this thing with this nifty handle at the bottom. In theory, all I need to do is pull on it, and the entire thing will come oh no. Okay, we'll do it the hard way. The bottom of the carbon was stuck to the bottom of the mold because we didn't wrap it well enough with that release film. I used the sawzall to chop off the bottom inch or so to get the sticky part gone. I also sawzalled off the top so I could hammer the top of the mold out. One of these days Milwaukee is going to send me a cease and desist since they own the name Sawzall and what I use is a DeWalt reciprocating saw. Or maybe they'll just send me a Sawzall. 
I thought I could maybe get a hold under the center tube from the bottom and pull it out, but all I managed to do was tear up the mold. So I decided to try to hammer it out from the other side, which completely tore up the top of the mold, but it did start to come out. And eventually... And then it was a simple matter of taking out the four pieces that we had glued together earlier. The first one came out pretty much complete, which gave me hope that the rest of them would also come out with no problem, but they did not. They all broke into smaller pieces on the way out, either at the glued seams or just randomly cracking in the middle. So I spent the better part of an hour fisting a carbon fiber tube up to my elbow. The last bits came out by hammering them from the top. The aftermath was not pretty for the mold. I will need to print another one for the second tube. But eventually, we had a parachute tube a kind of heavy parachute tube. I cleaned up the rear opening with a carbide spinny thing. The parachute line runs through here to attach to the car. I'll need to chop the other end off to length, but I'll do that after I finish the body design and know how long it needs to be. There are some issues, just one really. The carbon didn't slide over itself, it just kind of folded up as the vacuum sucked it onto the mold. This pulled the carbon away from the mold a bit and left the outside looking like a long, hard, veiny shaft. We could have possibly mitigated this with several smaller strips. It doesn't actually matter for this part, so I don't really care. As I said before, this tube doesn't really need the strength of carbon fiber. I could have made it out of plastic and it would have been fine. I did mention that we were kind of winging it with the thickness of the carbon. I don't know how heavy this carbon weave was, and I didn't bother to weigh it. We just laid up four layers, which seemed good enough at the time. And it is enough. Way too enough. You could kill a man with this parachute tube. Absolutely unnecessary just how I like it. With one tube down and one to go, we decided to mix up the manufacturing process a little bit. The first tube was a simple wet layup, but this time we're going to use resin infusion. This is where we suck the resin into the part after it's inside the vacuum bag. We're also going to use half the carbon fiber this time, since four layers is apparently overkill. The first part of this is the same. We cut out our carbon pieces and wrapped the giant black dildo in red release film. We stuck the carbon on using spray adhesive, but we didn't put any resin on it yet. Then comes the peel ply, and here's where things really start to diverge. This is resin flow film. It's designed to let resin flow over and around it, so you can vacuum one side and pull resin in through the other side. We're not going to do it exactly like this, though, since the part is very long. The last thing you want to do is get your resin halfway through your infusion and then start curing. So we're going to pull the resin through one of the long sides and vacuum from the opposite side. But to make sure we get an even distribution, we're going to pull vacuum from three spots along the edge. We cut away the resin flow material from just around the hoses, so once you get the resin close to that hose, it'll stop flowing so quickly in that area. Since we were using those food bags, we only needed to seal up one side of the bag. We couldn't use the heat strip this time because of the tubes, but to do this, we just used a squishy double-sided tape stuff. It's not actually double-sided tape, it's more like a real sticky clay. You just kind of mash it in there and knead it around to make sure there are no openings for air. There are always openings for air, so just squish it a whole bunch. With that done, it was time to suck. And suck we did. The resin slowly moved up the spiral wrap, wetting out the peel ply and the carbon. You can see all the little bubbles moving through the resin, probably because we didn't degas it properly. But the resin is flowing toward the vacuum hoses, slowly soaking in all the carbon. After it was all soaked, we moved it to the composites oven, this time a bathroom instead of the closet so we don't accidentally burn the house down. The next day, it was time to pull the part out. The outside was about the same as the previous part, except I forgot to leave a flange for the peel ply to start peeling from, so I had to peel it all the way down the length of the tube using a screwdriver. Thankfully, I don't care if I scratch up the surface finish of this part. As for the inside, that was a different story. Remember that handle I put on the bottom of the last one? Well, I beefed it up for this one, hoping I could get the bottom to break free by wiggling the part back in. Nope. Back to the fake sawzall. The cone on this one did not want to come out, even more so than the last one. I hammered the top repeatedly, mostly just tearing up the top of the mold. Then I shoved the tube all the way in to try to hammer at the top of that handle at the bottom. That did not work. I'll spare you the details, but the mold did eventually come out with the help of about 40 minutes of violence and a bogus sawzall. And there it is, two parachute tubes, both taking way more time than they needed to, made in a material that is exactly the wrong material, ready to go on a land speed car. They're not perfect, they're wrinkly, the carbon pulled away from the mold, but it doesn't matter. We'll have to be a little more careful on the race car body, but I do feel a lot better about making the body now. I'll be using fiberglass, but the method won't be too dissimilar from the first tube, and I think we're going to be able to make it without getting frustrated and setting the car on fire. Because I hate composites a little bit less after these two tubes. I still hate composites, just a little bit less.
Don't forget to like and subscribe.